Um, hello, my name is Sammy Gocho. It is April 18th, 2023 at approximately 5.31 p.m. And if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Goldfinger. Everybody calls me Jackie. My pronouns are she, they, and I'm calling in from Philadelphia, which is the traditional lands of the Lene Lenape. I'm thrilled to be here with you, Sammy. Yeah, me too. Um, so we're going to just uh, start out with some questions about your life, and then we're going to lead into um, just overall general Agnes information, and then Agnes Theater Department. So um, where did you grow up, and did you live in Georgia? Sure. So I grew up in Tallahassee, Florida, which is about five hours south of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, actually, an Agnes Scott like recruiter, I think, came and did a recruitment thing at our high school. So that's how I found out about it. Okay. Um, and were like, what other colleges were you touring, and like, why did you choose Agnes Scott in particular? Sure. So um, I was touring primarily smaller schools. I had done this program um, in high school where if you have good enough grades uh, your junior and senior year in high school in Florida, if there's a, a public university nearby, you can take classes there. So at the end of my junior year, I took a couple classes at Florida State University um, in Tallahassee, and that's huge. And I just realized that that was not the learning environment for me. Mm -hmm. Like, it was fine for those classes because they were lecture classes, but, like, I didn't want to be in a class with 200 other people. Yeah. There was no conversation. Um, so I looked at a lot of the smaller colleges, um, like, smaller in size, but mighty in, in stature. Okay. Um, so places like William and Mary um, and Smith and Sarah Lawrence and things like that. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, and were you involved in theater uh, before, like you went to college at all? I was. I a little bit. We didn't have a very big theater department at our high school, but we did have um, a teacher who taught a few theater classes and then let us basically kind of decide what we wanted to do. So like. A student wanted to do a production of Macbeth, and so we did a production of Macbeth in the fall. But like the, it was great because the teacher was very flexible mm -hmm. and interested in what the students wanted to do. And so like, I had written a couple of one act plays, and then I could put them up uh, in the you know in the theater department with my friends. And so I was I was involved in that way, but it wasn't that it was a small program. Oh, it was okay. A small Okay. Did you go into college wanting to do theater or did you have another major in mind? Well, I knew that I wanted to do something involved with writing mm -hmm. and plays were the things that I thought I wanted to really focus on writing. But the reason I chose, one of the reasons I chose Agnes Scott was because of the Writers' Festival mm -hmm. and kind of the emphasis, like terrific English department, yeah. both in terms of analysis, writing, critical writing, creative writing. So I... I really wanted to be at a school that valued that because I knew that was something I wanted to do. Um, and then I thought playwriting might be a thing I wanted to do, but I, I, I'd done so little of it at the time and only short what acts, mm -hmm. um, that really I was more focused on the English department and the theater department, okay. but I wanted there to be a theater department. So yeah. that was it. Okay. Um, and could you remind me, uh, your majors and if you had minors? Sure. So I did um, English literature, creative writing was my major, and theater and religious studies were my minors. Okay. Okay. And um, did you change those at all, like before, like the official like transcript, or like did you go back and forth before? I didn't. the The reason I didn't do a theater major was because, like I said, in my early in my Agnes Scott education, mm -hmm. I took more creative writing classes to try different areas. Mm -hmm. So eventually I was like, yes, plays are definitely the thing that's what I want to focus on. Um, but I ended up only minoring theater because I did spend the first two years doing a lot of different kinds of writing, yeah. which I think has been beneficial overall. Um, but that's why it was English first and then theater as a minor. Okay. Um, and then for your English uh, major, who was your advisor um, for? Oh, um, I had, well, I talked to Christine Cousins a lot. Oh, and okay. then I think. Yeah, and then Willie Tolliver, uh, Professor Tolliver was my official advisor, and he was yeah. awesome. 
Um, and then I did talk to Christine Cousins a bit because of her work with the creative writing students. Mm-hmm. But she, Professor Tolliver was my advisor. Christine yeah. Cousins, uh, she just uh, retired this like past, I think, last year. Um, wow, she's an institution within an institution. Yeah, there. yeah, no, like um, I had to help with, and then um, Tolliver, I like he's still like huge at the school, so he's amazing. Yeah. He's phenomenal. I've heard a lot about him because I'm I'm a history major, um, but I oh. have I have a lot of friends. That's the whole reason for this class is why <laughs> we're, we're we're researching the theater department. <laughs> um, I love it. But yeah, okay. Um, so uh, did you have any jobs while in college? I was on the work study program, so I got a scholarship to cover tuition, and then I worked actually kind of wherever they needed me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I ended up the art gallery. Okay. at the theater building yeah. I ended up being the front desk person most of the yeah. time for that okay um and then besides that were you involved in campus life in general yes I lived on campus for all my four years and one of the reasons I did that was because I liked that there was always something going on mm-hmm. you know like anytime I wanted to I could pop over and see a friend's art at the art gallery or we people did film screenings all the time and there were guests on campus that speakers and so yeah i really enjoyed the intimacy of that type of campus life especially after having spent a, about a year at florida state university yeah. which is a, you know good school very, but very huge yeah yeah, yeah. um it's weird because my like my high school was twice the size of agnes scott so it's <laughs> It's interesting. It must be must feel very small. To you yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and for your graduation year, could you um, not only state your graduation year, but uh, if you were like the red, blue, cl- like red, blue, yellow, green class, and like if you remember your mascot? Sure. So we were class of two thousand. Mm-hmm. We were the blue, and we were the Blues Brothers. Um, I don't know if you know those old movies, I do. but. Um, Oh, it's uh, Jim Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. They created this skit on Saturday Night Live that eventually they turned into a movie. Oh, and it okay. was it was so cool. Yeah, it was about the two brothers from Chicago who like got high and played music and went on all these wacky adventures. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, um, and uh, how was your time? Um, like overall, like what was your favorite class? I think at Agnes Scott. Yeah, I have to say I had, I had a couple. I was lucky enough to have um, Professor uh, David Thompson, who I think recently retired. Uh, he is retiring this semester. This semester. Yeah. Um, he taught a really great women in theater course where he mm. looked at the evolution of women playwrights in, in American theater history, mm. which was fantastic. And Deidre Moore, who um, she just came in for a one year but she, uh, to do a special guest artist, but she did a great um, class on uh, performance art. And we went to a lot of different venues in Atlanta and saw her performance art and talked to the artists, and that was great. Um, and then I have to say, like Dr. Tolliver's, when he was doing his film analysis classes, were always a blast. Okay, great. Um, and from what my research tells me, you were at the time period in which, like, it was kind of shifting for like the theater department staff. Um, I know you had Dudley Sanders, um, but could you maybe say what it was like to have that um, that change in like? theater teachers and then like right when David Thompson was just starting yeah so we did so I had Dudley Mm -hmm. and then um they brought in a couple of like one year hires while they were looking for the full-time tenure track professor who would eventually be David Thompson Mm -hmm. Uh, for me I loved having um the two years with different multiple professors because each of them brought something new. Deidre Moore was one of those. Mm. And each of them brought a new specialty. And so for someone who had come from a very small, like one class a semester, maybe theater program in a more rural high school, Mm. then come to college and have like 
oh, I can take three classes from this professor and this type of art and this type of theater I've never heard of before, or I know a little bit about, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was great. I could definitely see if someone came in who had more experience in theater than me. It might have been frustrating to have fluctuations like that yeah. in your professors. But for me, it worked out great because I yeah. <laughs> got to learn about all these different areas that either I didn't know existed or I didn't know much about. So for me, it worked. Okay, great. Um, and are you still in touch with any of your professors or, like, from the theater department? Yeah, so I saw the last time I was down there, I came from Alumni Weekend. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Writers' Festival Weekend. Mm-hmm. My apologies. Two years ago now. Um, and so I, Christine and David Thompson and Dudley Moore um, – and like Willie Tolliver, like a couple of professors I had reconnected that way. But the only person I'm consistently in touch with is David Thompson, um, because we send each other plays that we've read that we like. And things. Yeah, it was interesting because um, we interviewed him like he was one of the first and you were actually one of the names that he mentioned on like students that really like made a memorable impact on him on why he oh. wanted to stay at Agnes and like just... Um, he said, like, I can't remember, but it was, like, your tenacity, I believe. And, like, just f- full, like, personality. He was, like, yeah, I want to stay for, like, these types of Agnes Scott students. So, like. Oh, cool. You were, like, on our list. We were, like, we need to get in touch <laughs> to <laughs> be, like, <laughs> to be. Well, that makes me feel very good. Thank yeah. you. And thank you for reaching out. Yeah, of course. Um, for um, overall the theater department, uh you said that you did writing uh was that were you like more on the performance side or more on like the technical like directing side i was more on the technical side but i appreciate the fact that at least when i was there david and dudley were very um they really encouraged people to try every position at least once Mm -hmm. um which was really beneficial, especially early in my career as a playwright, when I had to do some self-producing, I had a couple of friend shows, like the fact that I may not be good at every position, (laughs) but I know what every position does and what has to be done to make the show go, that was invaluable. So I, I did perform in two shows. I was not good. I do not recommend. If there's videos of that, don't watch it. I was terrible. But it was good to get a sense of, oh, this is what it likes to be on stage. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I was very, I did a lot of props, and I did, I was always on the reading committee for season selection and things like that. Okay. Um, and were you involved with the Black Friars at all? I was. I was. I had a friend of mine, I, I know people who were head, head of it at different times, and so... I always enjoyed being a part of Black Friars, okay. yeah. Great. Um, and could you say uh, what you currently do? And if that, um, if the theater, like your time with the theater department has helped you, how so? Absolutely. So I'm a playwright and opera librettist. Um, and the time the theater department helped me very directly, just in the sense that um, not only was it a great academic education, mm-hmm. But also, like, the physical, the fact that it's such a small department, Mm -hmm. we had to do everything, right? And so when I got out, I feel like I was head and shoulders above my peers who only focused in one aspect of theater in college. Because I could actually put together my own show. Mm -hmm. Where a lot of people, they were like, I can only write, or I can only do light. So I can only, I'm like, nope, I can, as I was saying earlier, I can do everything. Okay. Um, it also, I just think, gave me, I, it gave me a confidence in my voice as a writer, my artistic voice, because I was, there were only a couple, a handful of us writing plays at Agnes Scott at that time, and so we all became, like, super tight and super supportive, mm-hmm. so I feel like at a bigger institution or an institution that didn't care quite as much, I think it would be very easy to get lost and, like, here like we had our core people we'd read our plays together we'd support each other and that gave me a foundation um i think of positivity and just a strong foundation where it's like whenever something goes really wrong Mm -hmm. on a show i'm like you know what this sucks this is terrible i hate this 
but also I can go back and remember, but I love writing in rooms with my friends and I love doing this and everything's going to be okay. You just have to get through it. So like I can draw from that well um, when things don't go right now. So that's lovely. Okay, great. Um, And speaking of, uh, would you like think of any specific challenges there were during your time in the theater department? Yeah, I mean, definitely the the other side of the coin of having a smaller department is just that there aren't quite as many production opportunities. And the ones you do have, they could be great, but because you're only doing a couple of shows, you don't get to do, you don't get to do it, like produce a wide range of aesthetics mm-hmm. and work in them on a practical level, even though you can study them. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that sometimes, um, students come in and they really want to do like a big musical every year or something like that. And that's just not something Agnes Scott has the capacity to do, which yeah. is, which is fine. It's just very different. Um, and as I said, I could also see that like the, the number of professors who kind of changed over and came through and left when I was there. Um, I mean, for me, it was, it worked out well, but I could see for someone else, it could be a problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I I don't know if you know, but um, so David Thompson and Sarah Thompson are retiring this year. Oh, wow. I didn't realize they both were. Yes. And um, they're actually not getting replaced. Um, That's too bad. And the arts departments are actually merging into the creative arts major Mm. as like one department. um, Where it's basically like you do like a little bit of everything in the arts and then like you have a focus in the theater department yeah um yeah it's hard I mean I have to say I've seen that because I also adjunct I've adjuncted a number of colleges and University of Pennsylvania where I adjunct recently went to that where it's a it's an arts division inside the bigger English department and I think that it's it's really devastating for the community overall like mm-hmm. you're, but um I also understand the reality of like if you don't have enough students in this you don't have enough students yeah. right so what I hope Agnes Scott would do is kind of what some of these other programs up here I live in Philly and a number of the programs up here have done that they've merged into some kind of creative arts department mm-hmm. but then students their junior and senior years can the college will hire mentors in a specific area right so every junior and senior gets to study with an artist in their community who specifically does what they want to do mm-hmm. so they do get a deeper educational experience yeah. in that form. um but yeah it's i mean even temple university which had one of the biggest theater departments in the country just cut their MFA programs except acting yeah it's it's economically awful right now yeah especially um as like we're going through the timeline it's basically the pandemic really hit theater hard like it's yeah yes yeah for sure yeah um so you graduated around uh you graduated 2000 um Mm -hmm. could you talk about uh I guess social uh topics and big events that were happening that was like a huge focus in the theater department and just in general during your time at Agnes sure so um gay marriage was something that was being legalized in certain pockets of the U.S. or trying to be so that was I know we had a number of pieces on gay marriage but also just queer rights overall so that Mm -hmm. was a focus um, we had, I think for the first time, uh, we had some students interested in doing devising work where you get together with a company of, of, uh, theater artists. And instead of writing something down and then performing it, mm-hmm. you like create the script together in improv. And so I know that there was a big interest in that, which was really cool. It wasn't quite my thing, but I participated a couple times and I watched students do it. And I think that that like devising type of work was, was popular. Um, 
And I think that uh, there were also questions around, especially women and body issues. I remember we did a production of Why We Have a Body. Mm-hmm. Um, and like eating disorders and was, or was a big okay. conversation topic in culture at the time. And okay. so we did a number of pieces that revolved around how, at the time, it was just women and men, unfortunately, non-binary at that yeah. time. That was something like, um, it was our mess up. Um, but the, uh, the there was a focus on, like, women's bodies and what did it mean to have a female body. Um, we did have, I think, a couple of trans students, which I think okay. was unique for a place at the time. So, like, um, incorporating their voices and how they feel about their body, I remember for me, it was really big because I, I didn't know anything at all about the trans community. Yeah. Uh, so it was also educational. Um, but those were some of the big issues that, like, big, quote-unquote, cultural issues yeah. that we engaged with in the art making. Yeah. I, um, did you at all participate in the vagina monologues? Because I know yes. that y'all used yeah, to have those that every, every year. year. They, they, I think currently our PPGA club is trying to bring that back, but we haven't oh, had, great. we haven't had them since the pandemic, at least in my, from what I've seen. So. Well, and what I loved about those is I don't know if Eve Insler is still doing it, but she used to update it every year and put updates on her website. Mm. So you could do some of the older monologues and then also newer monologues okay. that reflected the kind of evolution, uh, the evolutionary idea of gender and sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. And then we always, our years, we always made them a fundraiser. Okay. So like, you know, um, for a local women's sh- women shelter or health clinic or something. And I, I think we'd always just raise a couple hundred bucks. I mean, it wasn't much, yeah, but, but it was it more was- than nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, and then oh, I'm trying to look cause I'm trying not to. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I can also talk another time if you wish. I, I just, I didn't realize I was gonna have to be the pickup person today no you're all good yeah um for overall um how was tech week like and like kind of that situation yeah tech week is crazy i have to say um it is my least favorite time of production um also because i am not good at like design elements like Mm -hmm. lighting and sound it's all very much magical to me and so like they're in we're in tech and they have to stop for this lighting thing and then they put the new lighting thing up and it looks like just like the other lighting thing did (laughs) but we stopped for 45 minutes for them to do it and I'm like it looks exactly the same and they're like no it doesn't and I'm like you're right I'm wrong I don't know (laughs) why but I know that that's true um so I mean tech week was crazy because typically we'd have very late nights Mm -hmm. um and so you know, if you have a morning class the next day, yeah, it killed you. So I think a lot, not a lot, but I know a number of us, because um, we knew when Tech Week was coming, we would talk to our professors and be like, if there's any deadlines this week, can we just tell you we're going to be late now and then have a game plan for when we turn things in? Yeah. And we had a number of professors who would do that. They're like, okay, your Tech Week ends on, you know, Thursday. Mm-hmm. They'd be something Monday instead of Friday. That was fine, right? Yeah. So um, I did always appreciate that. There are professors who would work with you because Tech Week is just a killer. It just takes a lot yeah. of time to figure out the moment-to-moment needs of the show. Yeah. Um, and did you I, – I know there was, like, an end-of-the-year awards. Uh, did you um, go to those? Um, did you win any awards? I can't remember if I won any. I, I, I may not have won any, but I – I loved going because it was basically, I mean, it was an award ceremony, but it was basically a big party. Yeah. Like that's, it was like everybody coming back, no matter what position you had on the show, everybody from the box office people to the prop people to the actors, like everyone was welcome. And it was like this end of year celebration that had some awards, which was cool, but also was just like, we're all getting together and celebrating this cool thing we did before we go off in the summer. Because a lot of times, you know, people go off in the summer, they graduate, you may not see yeah. them again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a really, really special moment. Okay, nice. And then uh, one last cl- question. Um, was there anyone else in the department that really made an impression or impact on you during your time at Agnes? In the theater department? Yeah, like in another, like another student. Um, 
Oh my God, yes. Yolanda Rice. I don't know if you've spoken with her. We, I've been trying to schedule with her. But. Okay. Yeah. She's amazing. She's also... She's... There was... Okay. So some designer designed... I don't even remember who it was. This really crazy painting that had to be on the floor of the stage. And it had like yin-yang symbols in it and animals. Like it, it was, I mean, beautiful, but also so much fucking work. No. Yeah. Because it had to be painted on the deck of the stage. Mm. So they laid down a black, like, fake um, fake flooring for the stage. And then the student designer outlined everything she wanted in chalk. And then a group of us were supposed to come and paint around her outline and paint everything on the floor. Mm -hmm. But only Yolanda and I showed up because fuck everybody else. <laughs> so... I don't know where everybody was. I don't think it was a mean thing. I think it was just one of yeah. those things where, like, you plan, and then, like, only two of you show up. And I'm like, we can't do this, Lambda. We can't do it. It's too much. And she's like, we're going to do it. So we just ordered pizza, and, like, it was one of those tech nights where, like, literally it was just, like, at first it was fun because we had, like, music and yeah. pizza, and we were painting. And then, like, 2 a.m., like, we were just, like, crying. And, <laughs> and like, it was just like, I hope it's pretty. I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, but it had to be painted that night. Otherwise, it was not going to dry in time yeah. for the years to come in. Um, so I have to say we did it. But it was not if it was not for the like strength of Yolanda Rice, I don't know that I had thought I could do it or pull it mm -hmm. through. And she did the same thing. Um, it's our senior black cat performance or a junior. The year that you do the junior. big black cat. Yeah, junior. Junior year. Whoever was running that had screwed it up. And so they called Yolanda and I because we were theater people. And they were like, it's tonight and no one knows what they're doing. And so um, I uh, I took, basically, I took all the writing they'd done, none of it, which made me sense. And I put it into the script. And then Londa figured out all of the tech stuff, like who had to move where and what happened. And between the two of us, like, we ended up putting it together and everybody had a really good time at Black Cat. But it was just like a crazy, like eight hour, 10 hour scramble. Mm -hmm. And like, again, just, she was amazing. Cause again, it was a thing where I was like, I don't know that I would have taken the plunge to like do it. I think I may yeah. have just said, this is too hard. Um, so yeah, she's an extraordinary person. So yeah. I've actually a couple of times because for a while she was living near Philly. Mm -hmm we've been able to stay in touch um but yeah she's cool i hope you get to talk to her super smart me too yeah um but yeah thank you so much for talking um Absolutely. if you have any pictures by chance or like any kind of old oh. photos or like programs yeah. by chance um feel free to send them my way um preferably in the next week or so we'd love to have your perspective because the archives aren't as not like fulfilled Got it. Let me talk to my mom because there may be stuff at home okay. that she can like photograph and send. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't want to take too much up of your time. <laughs>